let me get started. Let me give a quick introduction about uh, about myself uh, for the people who are uh, sort of hearing me for the first time. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Jay. Uh, you can uh, uh, you can take my trainings via InfoSec Train, and uh, I have certifications including FIP, CIPPE, CIPM, and CIPT. I have certifications from uh, uh, Information Security uh, in terms of CISA, CSA Star and also FIPT from OneTrust. I have 11 plus years of experience uh, in terms of data privacy and cybersecurity. I have implemented data privacy programs for large organizations, all right? So uh, that's a quick, crisp introduction about me. And uh, so I've been training people for the last uh, three to four years and I've helped more than, uh, uh, I've trained more than 1,000 plus people and I've been training uh, for a lot of corporates in terms of data privacy certifications, all right? So what you're here for uh, uh, for a quick webinar is a CIPT discussion, Certified Information Privacy Technologist course, right? So I'm gonna uh, quickly jump into the agenda for the session. Uh, today's agenda is about tech privacy and why it's important. What are the best certification for tech privacy? A uh, quick introduction to CIPT and its coverage and the discussion on important topics, all right? So about InfoSec Train, we have uh, a pioneer in terms of information security and data privacy trainings. We have started from 2016, okay? So I'm gonna jump directly in terms of tech privacy and its importance, all right? So uh, when we say tech privacy, right? Uh, generally, why uh, the certification is very important, it starts with a fundamental uh, understanding that people need to think of. Uh, whenever I say data privacy certification, you would have heard about CIPPE or CIPM. A lot of people have adopted to these certifications. But uh, if you if you if you specifically look at the companies like uh, the top big companies, the technology giants in the uh, uh, in the world, they always look for niche skills uh, for people who can adopt privacy in technology. Correct. So having said that, uh, tech privacy is a is an evolving domain. The term privacy engineering has gained a lot of uh, uh, significance and momentum of late. And thanks to uh, uh, COVID plus the different data privacy laws that have been enacted around the world, currently we have 200 plus data privacy laws around the world, right? So this means there is a a, a tighter uh, environment for organization to build uh, your uh, products, solutions, and uh, your services, right? So you need to embed privacy at a very early stage, right? So with a certification like CIPPE, CIPM helps you to decipher the data privacy laws and one CIPM for in terms of how to manage a program. But there is one important puzzle, uh, part of a puzzle which is missing is the technology layer, correct? So this certification focuses on the technology layer, right? So tech privacy uh, is gonna be a very important factor. I'll give you one simple example, right? So uh, whenever you go for any large scale implementation of a privacy program, uh, most of the components are gonna be automated right so if you if you speak about data subject rights or data discovery your different types of assessments which we perform right all these activities are going to be automated plus every product and uh, every services that we're going to create has to undergo your privacy by design right so if you think about these uh, uh, important elements that we discussed a technology professional will have a very important role to play here, right? So people traditionally think privacy is a legal topic and privacy is more to do with uh, attorneys and people maybe from GRC background will have a, a, a only possibility towards this. But uh, to be honest, the technology professionals have a very, very important say in terms of the uh, evolution of privacy engineering right how organizations are going to build their products how they're going to build their solutions in the market right and for that the technology professionals need to understand privacy right that's why tech privacy is going to be very very important so you're going to see uh, uh, there is a huge uh, adoption of artificial intelligence and machine learning from the banks and many of the uh, uh, organizations so rapidly correct so that's another important element where 
you uh, you need to see the uh, intersection of technology professionals with the data privacy right so that being said that's just a, a, a like high level overview of how tech privacy is important right so i'm going to start in terms of the different uh, certifications for data privacy right so there are uh, many certification variants which is like cipp which is certified information privacy professional cipm which is certified information privacy manager cipt which is certified information privacy technologies i'll i'll just do a quick overview about these three certifications one by one cipp is about understanding the different data privacy laws right and uh, uh, it's it, it's about how do you interpret the legal requirement which is coming from the different data privacy laws and regulations and uh, cipm is about how do you manage a privacy program right from scratch how do you build how do you operate a privacy program and cipt is to validate your knowledge of privacy in terms of technology layer right so if you if you have cipp plus cipm or cipt you can go for fip now for specifically for technology professionals uh, uh, there are two variants which has uh, global recognition which is your uh, cdpsc and cipt so cdpsc was like around 3 years old or 4 years old in the market if i'm not wrong and uh, it, it 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 has a, a, a good recognition but it it doesn't stands out as cipt if you can check yourself in the market wherever you are finding uh, uh, a requirement in terms of this tech chains like uh, google microsoft or wherever you want to uh, find out for a privacy role in terms of architecture or if any any specific uh, role that has a significant touch point on privacy they will obviously keep cipt right so this certification has a lot of importance right and by the way uh, uh, iapp is a, a not for profit association which was started in 2000 so it's an excellent resource for professionals who want to develop and advance their careers by helping the organization successfully manage risk and protect their data all right so now we spoke about different variant and uh, i gave glimpse of cdpsc and cipt uh, uh, instead of saying what is not there in cdpsc rather i would prefer to speak about what is there in cipt right so cipt at this point of time is the most respected and globally recognized tech privacy certification right so that can be a uh, uh, sort of uh, evaluated uh, in terms of any profiles that you are looking for job opportunities you will see uh, that validation comes in terms of requirements right now this course is going to help you to understand some very in, uh, critical components like uh, how do you build privacy uh, uh, friendly product services and process by embedding data protection throughout every stages of development so in this course we just not speak about the privacy by design seven principles but we go uh, in terms of ex uh, examples of how do you adopt this into a software development life cycle right so that's that's the uh, uh, uniqueness of this course there are a lot of important unique points which is only covered by your cipt course right and uh, in this course once you clear this right uh, as i told you very few people have cleared cipt variant one is the lack of awareness not uh, uh, not being aware about this particular certification and second it it is of course a, a, a certification which requires you know to understand both technology as well as privacy right so it is well suited for people who are already from a technology background so that's the reason uh, uh, it's, it's quite uh, uh, interesting at the same time challenging as well all right and uh, part of this course you will be able to recognize the benefits and challenges of emerging technologies and how to use them while respecting customer privacy very very important point right there is a rapid development of technology that is happening around us and uh, this is where your uh, capd kind of course is going to have a very big impact two reasons one capd course undergoes a lot of change every year because of the rapid changes that happens in technology uh, especially ai 
your uh, machine learning internet of things your uh, connected vehicles so all these are some of the very upcoming trends and topics you get to sort of see a privacy lens over these topics with this course right and also uh, in terms of how do you develop your privacy and uh, uh, security controls right in terms of how uh, uh, it's important to build these controls at a very early stage of your development and the importance of minimization your pseudonymization anonymization right another example i can tell you is like whenever we speak about anonymization we just stop and we say that it has to be uh, ensured that the data can never be reconstructed into original form correct but in this course i'll try to explain to you with the live example of how do you actually differentiate between the different levels of anonymity right so uh, this this makes this course a bit more uh, 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 sort of interesting and uh, you will learn a bit more in terms of how do you actually apply it okay to uh, towards your organization practices right <clears throat> so about this cipt course so cipt uh, uh, it's about all it's all about embedding privacy and technology right so uh, you will be having around 90 questions to test that knowledge of how will you embed your privacy into the technology layer so you have interestingly only 75 questions that carry a score and uh, remaining uh, 15 questions are uh, essentially uh, kept for evaluation purposes which 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 is could be a psychometric or could be used for future uh, uh, future reasons which only iapp uh, uh, has reasons all right so uh, you need to score 500 uh, sorry you need to score 300 out of 500 uh, uh, so if i have to see the if i have to put it in the exam scale if you see it in the bottom the exam is actually scored between 100 to 500 and uh, you need to secure a pass mark of 300 all right and uh, you have two and a half hours the total number of questions is 90 out of which only 75 questions carries a mark right so the table that you see it's not a actual table uh, this is provided in the candidate handbook it's only a, a fictionalized scale all right which is just to give you like somewhere between 65 to 70 percent if you are able to score it consistently then obviously you are ready for the exam all right so uh, the most important thing which is which is uh, uh, in your hand and not to worry about how the exam is being scored or scaled is that if you're scoring 70 percent consistently right uh, uh, in terms of all your mock test and preparation then of course you are ready for the exam right this is one way i usually tell my candidates how to assess that you are ready for the exam all right and uh, in terms of in terms of this cost the course, uh, uh, the certification cost, exam voucher cost you $550, right? And uh, once you clear this exam, you need to pay either $250, which is called a certification maintenance fee, or membership fee, which is at $275, right? Now there is a there is a subtle variance uh, which you should be aware of. This uh, certification maintenance fee is for two years, and uh, your membership is for only one year and the most important difference here is that you are part of membership you get access to a lot of iapp specific resources right so these are some of the important points that you need to be aware of plus uh, once you clear the certification you have one more criteria which is to maintain uh, a cp credit of 20 for a cycle of two years which is quite easy to get compared to your other uh, certification exams all right and uh, about this exam as i told there is a two and a half hours the exam is divided logically into two half 45 and 45 and uh, once you reach the 45th question you will be asked to complete that section and uh, then you will be given a 15 minutes optional break and once you uh, uh, close section one you will not be able to go back to section one you have to uh, move to section two which is the next 45 questions within the 45 questions you have a uh, 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 flexibility to flag a question uh, instead of answering a question you can move on to the next question all those flexibilities are there all right couple of more information maybe if if you want to schedule the exam you can still reschedule the exam at a free of cost 48 hours before the exam date 
right? So these are the informations which you should be probably aware of, right? So remember these two numbers, five fifty dollars and two fifty dollars or two seventy five dollars. This approximately takes you somewhere around eight hundred dollars, right? And again, whatever number I'm specifying here is for the Indian candidates. If you are purchasing this exam voucher outside India, obviously the rates will be different because this exam voucher rate is determined by IAPP for different uh, geographical regions. All right. So I'm going to quickly speak about the curriculum of CAPT. This is something which, which you should be aware of before opting this certification. What is going to be discussed part of this uh, 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 certificate course so that uh, if this interests you, if that sounds uh, like this is a, a area which you want to invest your uh, journey or something you want to uh, uh, learn the skill set for the next one or two years, then this is this is something you should first look at. The first is your foundation principles of privacy and technology. So here we are going to look in terms of the touch points of privacy. Plus you're going to see in terms of some important foundational principles like your value sensitive design. You will be uh, looking into uh, uh, in terms of contextual integrity in terms of there are Nissenbaum's uh, contextual uh, uh, integrity and plus there are four or five important elements which will be helping you to understand your uh, data privacy at a foundation layer and uh, the next is your role of technology professional in privacy this is about your data life cycle right from collection to disposal what will be the role of privacy technologist at each of these layer right so that is the uh, module two module three and four are my favorite topics uh, because module three is about like what we discussed about the life cycle module three is about the different threats and violations which are there. This is specific to privacy, right? We have, uh, I ha I'll show you a quick slide in the uh, upcoming one, where you'll see the Daniel Solov's uh, 14 harm dimensions, which is gonna be the different privacy threats. Most of the terms, you might be hearing it for the first time, right, if you are not from the privacy background. So these, these terminologies are uh, very important when you're doing a data protection impact assessment or if you are building a, a, a product and you need to know the different types of interferences that could be there, right? So these are very, very important for a technology professional to be aware of, right? And module four is in terms of how do you address these concerns which you've identified in module three, right? So module four is about your different uh, privacy enhancing technologies, right? As I told you, anonymization, you have homomorphic encryption, we have different encryption methodology that we are going to be discussing. Prevential ident uh, uh, differential privacy, differential identifiability. So all these terms and also a very, very important topic, which is your design strategy, right? There is a data design strategy, plus there is a process design strategy. So these are very, very important concept for a, a, a architectural layer person. Uh, if you are uh, architect, and you need to be uh, going forward to be aware about the privacy uh, touch points, right? So uh, you cannot you cannot say that I, you are, do not have an understanding of privacy if you are being an architect going forward, right? Because this is going to be a mandatory requirement since it comes from a law. It is it is going to be a minimum uh, requirement that every organization has to cater to, right? So the next is a privacy engineering. As I told you, this is a very, very important concept that is getting evolved, uh, quite popular in the US, right? Uh, they, they set up privacy engineering team, just like we have incident management, we have different types of team that we have within the organization like vulnerability assessment, GRC. So privacy engineering is a core uh, discipline which focuses on developing solutions and uh, embedding privacy as an engineering approach. Uh, a, a quite interesting uh, focus there. We follow the NIST paper part of this particular uh, chapter. And next is privacy by design, right? A very, very interesting chapter in terms of how do you apply privacy by design for a data life cycle. Uh, 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 plus it's about software development uh, methodology, right? So they are gonna apply this into a software development methodology and show you like, how do you uh, embed this requirement, right? And module seven is I what I told you is the a section dedicated to address the growing uh, uh, technology changes, right? So in terms of artificial intelligence, AI anthropomorphism, your uh, uh, social uh, mobile social computing, 
right so whatever we are seeing about artificial intelligence and all these risk associated the privacy touch point on the technology layer and the changing uh, uh, landscape we are going to discuss part of your module 7 right so that's your uh, cipt curriculum right so next question is in terms of why infosec train right so uh, there's one thing that i want to highlight is a topic like uh, uh, cipt will require more time to digest uh, a, a combination of privacy plus technology correct so you need adequate examples you need time to discuss all these topics so we offer 32 hour instructor led training right if you go and find this anywhere in the market no one will be able to match this time which is 32 hours right so this time is required for you to successfully sort of understand the concept uh, very clearly and then you will be confident to go for the exam right so that's the reason we have 32 hour session and this is very uh, a, a sort of a unique point compared to any other uh, player in the market right and second is this is the guaranteed lower price because if you see uh, if you take this course in us or any other place it's going to be almost twice the cost and also uh, this course even in indian market you will not find the same price and uh, the trainers obviously have cleared cipt and i've been taking this training to many corporates who are actually developing the day to day uh, uh, technology products around us right so i've taken this training for uh, organization like bosch and i've been uh, part of many uh, organizations i can't name all of them right so uh, the organizations have started looking for the skill set right so this certification will have a great value in next 2 3 years right and a key differentiator is we have a case study approach and we are going to give you the relevant templates plus there will be an exam strategy session dedicated uh, uh, support also in terms of whenever you uh, have a challenge with questions you can always uh, we'll have a bigger group to discuss all these things and obviously i'll be there and in terms of helping you with career guidance if you need some uh, suggestions career guidance is not equivalent to placement service i never uh, uh, support in terms of placement no one no one can ever support anyone for placement that's my <clears throat> uh, uh, philosophy and uh, uh, i'll obviously be there uh, people know me obviously i'm 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 quite open for discussion and always try to help you with whatever i can suggest you so the pricing is 49500 plus taxes right and uh, we don't often conduct cipt training all right so because we have so much of demand for cipp and cipm we conduct this once in 3 to 4 months only right after this probably the next cipt batch will be after 3 4 months all right so we are going to start this batch coming 11th on the saturday sunday right which is next saturday that's going to be the batch start date so <clears throat> if you are interested just drop a message and uh, we will uh, let the team contact you all right now uh, i have just kept few important topics right which i would like to highlight part of the session which now we are going to look in terms of your uh, uh, the daniel's uh, uh, solops 14 harm dimension so as i told you these whenever we speak about security risk you would have heard about common topics like these are the risk information security risk these are the different threats but if you see these uh, uh, terms are sometimes quite unique some uh, some of them you might have not heard about in the common terminologies right so that's why i said that chapter is uh, uh, is quite interesting which is chapter 3 right so here if you see the data life cycle it starts from collection at the collection you have surveillance you have uh, interrogation right and uh, then if you go to the processing so processing is after the collection how the data travels within the organization for different reasons for different purpose so you have aggregation risk secondary use exclusion insecurity identification and then your different types of invasion that ha that can happen which is the intrusion your decisional interference right and uh, then finally your information dissemination dissemination is in terms of your data sharing data transfer right so what are the different risks over there disclosure exposure breach of confidentiality increased accessibility and appropriation right so these 14 types of harm dimensions 
are uh, very essential for you to be aware of if you are embedding your privacy by design all right so i kept the slide to essentially make people think about your uh, uh, identification is going to be a very very critical factor tomorrow all the system whichever is going to uh, cater to a data subject request or in terms of fulfilling any personal data processing the uh, authentication identification is going to be very important right the concepts of understanding your pseudonymization in terms of anonymization techniques what which biometric data will become a sensitive personal data at what stage what are the clear dif uh, differentiators of those right and uh, we see a great adoption of biometric data for your day-to-day -day usages for example your uh, 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 attendance system which is quite popular nowadays correct so how many of you see cctv cctv camera around us almost it's ubiquitous around us right so if you see right right from the moment you step out of your house you will be able to see a cctv camera almost everywhere isn't it so this is where the concept of CIPT makes it more interesting for you to be aware of as a tech privacy, privacy professional. What are the important things you should be aware of? Simple example of uh, doing a employee monitoring scheme, right? It could be a data loss prevention, right? Or it, it could be a CCTV camera or it could be anything that you monitor, even a simple phishing attack, sorry, phishing simulation exercise we do on employees, right? Uh, sending them like a phishing message to see if they click on that link, right? Even this will be considered very sensitive in some of the regulations, right? So here you need to understand the implications. As a technologist, you need to know how to build this privacy at a very core layer when you are developing these solutions, right? So that's where it's going to be very, very interesting for the next five years. These identification system is going to be core uh, especially concern manager as a concept which has been developed this is where also you will see uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of technology touch point in terms of in terms of enabling data privacy compliance right so uh, this certification might be uh, will be the most sought out certification for large companies who wants to manage their privacy program right so that's that's another layer which i wanted to emphasize so just giving you a, a, a overview in terms of how the PETs, which we call as privacy enhancing technology, right? So how this is going to come very, very critical, right? So if you have any customer data that is linkable to an individual, right? And based on the type of data, there are different types of your privacy enhancing technology, which could be applicable right so if you want to do a high dimensional anonymization which is basically if you're going to use the data for your uh, ai training data sets or there's going to be a great adoption of the data then you need to go for synthetic data or differential privacy right or a simple obfuscated anonymization data could be for internal use then you can go for generalization aggregation and perturbations right all these terms will be discussed during the session and uh, you may depend on consent or it could be a legitimate interest these things have been now heavily discussed and debated in the different provisions of the law right and also what are the security analysis how do you protect this data the different types of encryption the uh, homomorphic encryption which is quite interesting that allows perform uh, that allows you to perform uh, arithmetic operation even without decrypting the data right so these are some of the very interesting aspects which i would say uh, that's going to make this particular topic uh, uh, for privacy technologists to be uh, sort of like this hits me right so because i i have seen many people who often get bored with policy procedure i'm not so uh, fond of these things like especially the tech people from architecture background right then this course is something which will be really interesting to you right that's something which uh, I felt to bring it upon. So privacy by design, this is what we started uh, in an initial conversation. I said, there are seven principles of privacy by design and uh, how do you apply them to your day-to-day uh, -day personal data lifecycle management? That's the most imp important element which you need to be aware. Tomorrow, if your organization asks you this question, how do you evaluate your privacy by design? How will you answer that question? Just being aware about the seven principles may not be sufficient 
you need to know what is required part of this principle how do you address these concerns part of your product and solutions that's that's what is the crux which we which which the organizations are expecting out of your privacy technologist and as i told you the ai stuff which is going to be the transparency plus your data minimization right a very very important problem statement which the ai developers are facing right now transparency in terms of what kind of data set that they are using and the data set are actually creating your internal bias right and that bias is refer reflecting in the results uh, i can give you n number of examples if you see recently google faced this backlash through uh, gemini and uh, that that is only uh, one example that maybe many people would be aware but this has been there for last five to six years a wide range of adoption was happening in us right when you join the session i'll give you a lot of interesting examples of what went wrong in terms of these biases and how it has affected end users right so that's something we will be discussing in detail this is the this is again one of my very favorite topic in terms of your uh, data strategy and your uh, uh, design strategies right so uh, data strategies related to your architecture and securing your personal data life cycle so here we have four important strategies which is minimize separate abstract and hide so we call these technical strategies as data strategies and then we have four process strategies which is enforce demonstrate inform and control right so these eight design strategies are critical for someone uh, who's uh, who's already at a senior position middle layer position so you need to know these strategies part of your organizational data protection right because data privacy is no more a optional requirement it's a mandate right so you will be questioned if you are having business with gdpr there is a requirement of showcasing your data protection by design and default how will you show that you need to have the strategies built in part of your environment right so to know that you need to be aware of these different different uh, privacy by design strategies all right uh, another important topic which is your dark patterns right so whenever i say dark patterns i used to give this simple example for example if you are entering into a supermarket right so and you see the supermarket you will see uh, the most important essential things are always kept at the back end isn't it and uh, you will be asked to uh, walk through all these things which you don't typically need but uh, uh, that is a sort of making people uh, be uh, sort of tempted towards the different patterns right this is what we if you go to ikea also you would have observed this like they make you look everything they 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 have structured the pathway in such a way isn't it so uh, this is called as design pattern when a design pattern which has a negative impact it becomes a dark pattern most of you would have been uh, uh, face this dark pattern part of our day to day interaction in internet right if you go to certain website uh, they by default just by logging into the site they they think they have given a consent or they use you color patterns like dark green color saying i accept to uh, provide all my data uh, through cookies or i accept all cookies so using colors uh symbols by any of these uh, elements which if you if you sort of uh, trick the user or you are trying to manipulate decision making this becomes a dark pattern right so this is again a very very interesting topic if you are a developer if you are developing your tools and solutions you might be doing this without knowledge but the authorities are going to take this very very seriously there is already a lot of assessments started going on different websites in the european union this is going to happen in india as well once the uh, law becomes little more tighter you will see these aspects will be evaluated if you are developing a solution or a product they will look if you are embedding any sort of dark patterns all right so i will quickly show you the questions these are the level of uh, minimum and maximum questions which are there this is called as exam blueprint so you have seven chapters in total and almost all the chapters have equal weightage the third and fourth which i said is most interesting as also carries the highest level of questions in terms of weightage right rest of the topics have almost a similar weightage so you cannot ignore any uh, sections and uh, there is no sectional cut off popular to many people who believe that there is a sectional cut off there is no sectional cut off but 
you need to sc uh, score a overall 300 uh, 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 score to get a pass mark right thank you so much for uh, joining me i hope today's session was uh, informative to everyone right if you like my training so uh, style of uh, teaching or discussion uh, uh, you can join my sessions it will be uh, more case study based so looking forward to meet most of you during my next cipt session all right thank you so much have a great day ahead yeah bye